Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. Now I wanted to talk for a minute about my new gear that I'll be using in 2016 for 4K video as well as still photos. So if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy and you can find all my videos. Check out my Facebook fan page, facebook.com forward slash Irix Guy and you can find a lot of still photos that I've created with this new camera that we're about to talk about. And check the link within this video's description and you can find a link to this camera, the lenses, and the various accessories that I use. So if you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel already, you, might, you may not be aware of the various cameras that I've used in the past. Obviously, I've started, I started out the channel with very basic cameras, then I upgraded to, uh, to 1080p cameras, and most recently 4K Ultra HD cameras. And I've used quite a few 4K cameras, and I've found uh, advantages and disadvantages to all of them. So check out my older videos. You'll see I used, um, I used a Panasonic Lumix LX100, which I really admired the small size of it, but the autofocus for video for me was just not good enough. It would, it would go in and out too much, and it would, it would degrade an otherwise awesome 4K video. Uh, then I picked up the GH4, the Panasonic Lumix GH4, and that's a really good camera. When I dialed everything in, uh, check out my St. Kitts Green Monkeys video, and you can see for yourself how awesome that looks when it's just dialed in precisely. And it was good when it was dialed in, but when it wasn't, it was hit or miss with that camera. And for me, I was spending too much time fumbling with the manual controls, and it was a guessing game. Am I going to nail it, or am I going to fail? And most of my videos that I shot with that were, were complete failures. And, and I, I couldn't deal with that. Because when you're out in the field, being able to capture the environment is the most important thing. Versus having to fumble with the tech and, and wondering whether or not it's, uh, it's nailed. So the GH4 encouraged me to segue to, uh, to the Sony brand. Now I've been using the camcorder I'm filming this with, 4K camcorder from Sony. been using it for a long time now and it's great. I've really enjoyed it, and it's it's what turned me on to the uh, to the Sony brand. That and uh, STK's Adventure Channel. STK's Adventure Channel had a Sony camera and was and was shooting. Uh, we did a, uh, a a YouTube collaboration in in Bermuda and shot a ton of uh, shot a ton of video and still photos. And I was just blown away by the image quality from the Sony camera. It was a Sony, uh, I think. I think SDK's Adventure Channel was a Sony RX, yeah, it was an RX100. I think it was a Mark III or a Mark II. It was before the, uh, the Sony RX100 Mark IV came out. So using the Sony camcorder, and then that encouraged me to get, a, uh, to get a, a camera that was suitable for video and stills as well. You can, you can do stills with a camcorder, but it's not optimal. Uh, so I picked up the, RX, the Sony RX100 Mark IV. Now, unfortunately, that camera disappointed me because it did have it was approximately a five-minute 4K continuous video recording limitation, and that, that got to be a nuisance, but ultimately it overheated, and that was unacceptable for me. So I picked up, after that, the Sony RX10 Mark II, which I loved. Check out all my videos from it. Amazing 4K video quality, amazing still photos. But it didn't have a detachable lens, even though it did have a Carl Zeiss lens on it. It was not. Uh, it was. It was near professional, but not quite professional. So for 2016, I decided to go for it. Uh, now this is the Sony RX. I'm sorry. This is the Sony A7 R2, also commonly referred to as the Sony A7R Mark II. Now this will do 4K video. Uh, it's 4K 30 frames per second, but it also has interchangeable lenses. And I can use the, uh, what's great about it, I can use the microphone that I already had that I was using with my, with my RX-10 Mark II. And I can also use this microphone in my Sony camcorder that I'm, uh, that I'm recording with right now, but obviously I'm capturing the audio externally uh, using this lavalier mic. So it's good to, good to have that, uh, that flexibility. What's, so, what's amazed me about this camera is that being a... Um, I don't. I definitely don't consider myself to be a professional when it comes to photo and/or video, but what this camera enables me to do 
is create those create results that look like a professional shot the photo or the video but it's all autofocus now this you can use this manually if you prefer to do so but for me the autofocus is so dead on that i mean the results i've been able to achieve from this already achieve with this rather already have uh have absolutely blown my mind now right now i've got the uh the 24 to 70 Carl Zeiss lens on it. You can find it within this video's description. But it has optical steady shot built in. Uh, what I also use with this, and I may pick up some more lenses here in the near future as the, uh, as the filming demands require it, but I've got the prime lens. Now this right here is really small, so you can imagine attaching this. See how much smaller that is? So if you want to keep size and weight down, you can use a 35 millimeter prime such as this, super duper high quality, super duper high quality images, as well as video, of course. And it's again, check the link within this video's description. You can find more detailed specs. And I've also got videos where you can see both of these lenses close up. So check the playlist uh, that you're watching now, and you can see uh, you can see all these in more detail. But the since this right here is not a uh, this is a what they call a prime lens, so it doesn't zoom in or zoom out. The image quality of this exceeds the image quality of this lens that's 24 to 70 millimeters. So it can zoom in and it can zoom out uh, using the, the ring right here, as you can see. And that's the lens hood on it. I flipped it around because I'm not using the lens hood, but it's nice to be able to flip it that way and keep it with the lens. Should you need it, you just turn it around and you can put it in use. But yeah, this, this camera has really, uh, uh, one minor complaint I have about it is the, the screen on the back. It'll pop up, as you can see there. It'll pop out, it'll pop down, where you can use it that way. But unlike the GH4, it won't go out to the side for face-on video segments. But the good news is, is that this camera pairs exceptionally well with a smartphone or a tablet. In my case, the iPhone 6 Plus. And I'll check out my playlist. I've got a demonstration where you can see how I pair my iPhone 6 Plus with this camera. It's just a uh, it's an easy process, and you can you can use it as a as a as an LCD display of sorts. Just hold it in your hand. Make sure you're in the frame. Uh, this camera, they say, is weather sealed. Obviously, I would not I would not want to subject it to water if I can avoid it. But if if I'm in a situation where a small amount of moisture hits the outside of it. I, I feel somewhat confident that it that it may be able to uh, to hold up. The camera body itself is a lot smaller than what you may be used to seeing in the Canon line or the Nikon line. A lot of those cameras are a lot larger, but this it feels very well made, but the size and weight is not crazy. And then also from a uh, from an in-the-field perspective, it doesn't give people, a lot of people may see this and they don't think, oh, that, that's just some average Joe shooting a photo. In reality, this is a very professional camera. So that's, that's the cool thing about it. It's kind of fly under the radar camera. It's got a uh, full-frame sensor. So that's, it's a mirrorless full-frame camera. And it's got what they call the Carl's Ice, I think they call it the T-coating which is supposed to reduce glare, and that's, that's present. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's present on the uh, camera and the lens also, I think. But it's just, and obviously you can mount your tripod plate. I use it in conjunction with this tripod right here. You can find it within this video's description as well. This is, this is one of my primary field tripods, and I also carry the smaller version of this tripod because I can use the same plates on it and I can just keep my tripod plate permanently attached to my cameras because I use the camcorder that I'm filming on now and then also this for uh, videos and stills. Just super duper high quality. One thing that uh, people have commented about is the battery life and I will admit the battery life is not that awesome. Uh, stay tuned at the time of posting this video. I don't have the video up, but uh, subscribe and stay tuned because I'm going to take this out in the field 
and just run the battery from start to finish with 4K video. Uh, the other thing that people had mentioned is that this camera overheats. I haven't overheated it yet, but again, I'm going to test it exhaustively in the field, so stay tuned for those videos and see if I can make it overheat. Uh, now, I did install the latest firmware update, which became available in December of 2015, and the consensus opinion that I've read online is that that was supposed to completely address any 4K video overheating issues. Keep in mind with DSLRs and mirrorless cameras such as this, that there is an approximate, I think it's around 29 minutes, and it's a hard stop for filming 4K continuous video. So there may have been people that, um, that encountered an over, what they thought was an overheating issue, and it was actually just a known limitation of these types of cameras. These are not camcorders, these are cameras, and they have that limitation. Also, people may have been using an SD card that did not have high enough read and write speed. So check the link within this video's description to find the SD card that I use for my 4K video. I use the same type card for this that I do for the, for the Sony camera that I'm filming this face on video segment with. So yeah, just a great portable option. And uh, you know, if you want to use the external mic like I do, it's great to be able to attach it. And this particular mic is awesome because I, it's phantom powered. I don't have to put batteries in it. So that's one less battery I have to fumble with. The disadvantage obviously is that it's using battery life <laughs> from the internal battery, but I haven't. The battery life for me has been perfectly acceptable and these batteries are so small that it's just easy to carry around a bunch of them. Very small, very lightweight, super duper easy. And one thing I like about this camera is being able to recharge by way of USB. If I don't want to use the wall charger for the battery, recharge it by way of USB. Uh, that's convenient, especially if you have a power bank, you know, a little battery bank or a, uh, or a solar USB panel in the field. It just makes it really convenient. Uh, something I do to keep everything organized and protected, obviously if you watch my videos, you, knew, you know I do a lot of tropical environments where I'm in the water and I want to swim to shore and and get those good shots. This case right here is what I use. It's plenty big. I've got plenty of room for my A7R Mark II accessories and various lenses. So that's a, uh, that's a good thing to, again, check the link within this video's description. There's a couple of configura configurations you can get. I got the foam. It's got Velcro on it so I can, so I can piece it together. Uh, no, I shouldn't say foam. I should say padded dividers. It's got Velcro and you can kind of shape it however, but they've also got an option where you can get it with foam that you pluck and pluck it however you want to pluck it to fit your stuff in there however you want to. So yeah, 2016 is going to be good. And one thing I hope is that I've, well, I know I finally found the camera brand that I like, and that's, that's Sony. And being able to, uh, I mean, inevitably, these cameras are always evolving, so I wouldn't be surprised if later this year, they come out with something that's an upgrade to the A7R II. The thing I hope is that Sony keeps this E-mount standard for their, for their cameras, for their Alpha cameras, or Sony Alpha cameras, because if they do, what that should enable me to do as I upgrade the camera body to be able to reuse my glass and not have to go out and purchase that. Because this stuff, I mean, without a doubt, can, can become expensive. But what I've noticed with cameras that have a fixed lens versus cameras like this with interchangeable lenses. Even if you're not a pixel peeper, you know, being someone that takes a still photo or video and really looks at the edges, it's just the difference for, for a casual viewer that may not even be that familiar with photography and or videography. When they watch a video that was filmed with a higher end camera such as this versus a video or photo that was taken with a, with a fixed lens camera, they'll probably see the difference and not necessarily, if you did, you know, screen over here and a screen over there, they could probably see the difference not even being a, a professional within the field. So it's, for me, it's important to create videos that, videos and photos that look as professional as possible, but obviously doing so with equipment that is compatible with my skill set as a photographer and a videographer. So this is, this is my gear for 2016. Stay tuned, as always. Going to continue to pump out a ton of videos here on Irix Guys Adventure Channel, youtube.com forward slash Irix Guys. So subscribe if you haven't already. 
Again, check the link within this video's description. Find this camera, all the accessories that I mentioned, and most importantly, y'all have a good day.